Are you choosing the right long iron replacement for your game? In today's lesson, I'm gonna go through some of them, help you understand which is best for your game and help you pick the right one. Let's get stuck into it. Guys, if you want loads more great tech advice, helping you save money on your purchases and loads of free golf lessons, hit the subscribe button down here. Tell everyone Matt Fry is your golf coach. Let's get stuck in to today's lesson. So I've got three golf clubs in my hand here. I've got a five wood, a three hybrid, and a three iron, more of a three driving iron. And each one of these clubs has a very similar loft on it. Three iron or three driving iron has got 19 degrees. The three hybrid has got 19 degrees, and my five wood has got 18 degrees. Now, one of the questions I keep getting asked in lessons is, well, which one should I go for? Because they're all a very similar loft. Surely won't they all go the same and won't they all do the same job? Not really. All are gonna do slightly different things and are probably aimed at a slightly different player. So let's take a look at it. Firstly, distance wise. I think because of the same number on the tin or very same numbers, 18, 19, 19, a lot of people think that they're all gonna go the same distance. So I'm just gonna hit one with each here and just show you how different the carry number is with each because that straight away could be a big factor in you choosing which one could be right for your game. So let's go the three driving iron first and see how far that this golf ball would go. Oh, it's a beautiful strike, I love that. I love this club so much, so, so much. Okay, so that one there, 216 yards of carry for myself. It might be that yours would maybe go 170, 160, 180, but 216, just bear that number in mind. So 19 degrees on my three driving iron. Let's hit the three hybrid and see how far that goes. Right, three hybrid, we've seen these becoming very popular over the last decade or so. Let's see how far this one will go. Little bit skinny that one. And that's gone 212 yards on a poor strike. I may add on that one, the, uh, the three driving iron was absolutely buttoned. So not too dissimilar with those two. Okay, so the five wood here, 18 degrees. So one more degree of loft. It's a longer shaft and a bigger head. So I would expect now that I would probably see a little bit more distance coming out of this one. And it's a nice, nice shot, that one. And that one has gone two 25 so we're seeing that jump up another 10 yards from the three driving iron and about 15 yards more from a three hybrid so firstly we've got to understand there a little bit more closer with the same loft and then because i've added a degree of loft and i've got a little bit longer in the shaft and a bigger head all of a sudden i've jumped up that extra distance i've gained that extra 10 yards so i think the first question you've got to ask yourself when you are getting a long iron replacement What's it for? Is it for that you want something to maybe replace that two iron, that three iron, that four iron? Because then you can equate what you would need in the bag. One of the other things there, if we just see those shots side by side, is the actual height of each of those shots. The five wood really launching very, very high in the air. As we look at those, that's got the most shallow face out of all the clubs. So from top line to bottom line we see that that's the most shallow as we then go to the hybrid that becomes the second shallowest and funnily enough that went the second highest and then as we get into my driving iron that is the deepest face club and that went a lot flatter the flight from that one so the shallower the face is as well the more that we're going to pop it up in the air so if you're looking for distance and you want to pop this golf ball up in the air quickly you would probably maybe look for something like a fairway wood now, if you want something that you're still going to get a bit of distance with, but you don't want to launch it high, you maybe don't struggle with that, it might be that you actually want to go more towards the hybrid. And vice versa, if you want that lower flight, but you still want some distance, and also club head speed is going to be a factor for the driving iron. If you're swinging it quick, you're probably going to be a bit more suited into that one. 
you probably want to go for that driving iron because that's why we see the pros going for it out on those Lynx golf courses where it's windy. They're trying to control the flight. They're trying to keep it a little bit flatter. So they want that slightly deeper face. They want that flatter flight, but while still maintaining some distance. So just bear that in mind when you are thinking about that. Versatility, that's another thing that we've got to look at when we're choosing a long iron replacement. Let's go and take a look at a few other scenarios. So versatility wise, what I want you to think about is, do you need help getting it up off the fairway? Those three shots there, we can again see different flights in all of them. The driving iron is harder to take a divot with, it's harder to launch, so it's that we have to really crush it and really generate speed to get them off the fairway and get them up and launched. When we've got it on a T-peg, we've got that little bit of relief. As well as we move down and we go into the hybrid, with having a little bit of sole relief there with more weight towards the bottom, they are designed to pop them up in the air a little bit quicker off the fairway. And then when they're coming into the green as well, they might land a little bit softer as well. With that driving iron, you might struggle to launch it. it might come out very flat and go bouncing up and not carry the total distance you want but then maybe come in hot and go running off then as we move into the fairway wood with it having that big sole as well if you're not quite striking it perfectly you've got a little bit more relief there as well so again off the fairways when that turf is tight you've just got a little bit more help in actually getting the golf ball up in the air so think about that when you're actually using this club is it going to be more of a t club or is it going to be here on the fairway that you need that club a little bit more because that'll probably help you choose it might be that you go into a seven wood or whatever it may be but you might think about this sole relief a little bit more are you swinging quick enough to generate that compression with the driving iron or are you in the middle where you actually I've got an okay swing, you can get it up a little bit, so maybe the hybrid falls a little bit more into that category. Or do you need that maximum sole relief to help you launch it, to help you give a little bit of leeway on the ground? If so, you need the fairway. One other thing that I want you to think about as well, we don't always hit the fairway. So how are these three clubs gonna perform when we find a little bit of rough? So if we find ourselves in the rough, then we're gonna have a little bit of a predicament with one of the clubs here, especially. If we look at how this golf ball's lying here, it's not actually too bad. But one of the problems is, like we would face with our other irons, if I got my driving iron out here and just place that in behind the golf ball there, we can see that because of the size of the rough there, it's actually climbing up, up towards the top of the face of the uh, driving iron. So there's gonna be a lot of grass that gets trapped in between the club face and that driving iron and the golf ball. So when we're maybe spending a little bit of time in the semi rough and it's sat down, something like this, knowing already that it's hard to launch off a fairway, introduce a little bit of rough, it becomes even harder to get up out of the rough. So that might be a big thing for you. If you've got a course where there's quite a bit of rough around and you find that maybe you hit 50% of fairways and you want to try and use something to get it further down, the driving iron isn't gonna be a great option for that. As where, if we go into maybe the hybrid, because of this sort of chunkiness of the head of this quite compact head we've got quite a bit of weight behind there these become really versatile and as we see there as we pop that in behind we get quite a clean face there it's not going to grab on too much and we're going to be able to still launch it out there like i say with it being compact and actually a little bit shallower a lot more of the weights down here so even out of lies like this it's going to actually cut through the rough quite well. As where with the, um, the hybrid, uh, sorry, the fairway wood here, what we might find, even though it is the shallowest face, yes, it would cut through the rough pretty well, but what we might see is that it actually spends a little bit more time getting caught up in the rough because of the actual mass of the head. So because of the actual size here, the rough might just grab onto it a little bit. So. What I would say is probably that the hybrid is the most versatile of all these three clubs. I would say that it's great off the tee, it's fantastic off the fairway, and then even out of a little bit of rough, we're gonna be okay. The fairway wood, fantastic off the tee. We're gonna get that height, we're gonna get the distance, we're gonna get the launch. 
Off the fairway, we're gonna get a little bit of relief with that big sole, so if you struggle with strike, awesome for that. You're gonna get the distance, you're gonna get launch off the fairway. Out of the rough, you might start to see it struggle a little bit because it might get caught up because of that size of the head. The driving iron, I would say, is for the more experienced player who wants to try and really control that flight, is generating quite a high amount of club head speed so they don't have to worry about the launch, and then potentially out of the rough, they've got other options in their bag that they can use. So three golf clubs there, guys, that are all very much the same loft, but all do very different things. So make sure when you're buying your next long iron replacement, you pick the right one. Tick those boxes off, ask yourself the question, what is this golf club for? What do I need it for? Do I need distance? Do I need help getting it up in the air? Do I need a little bit of relief when I'm striking it off the fairway? And how is it gonna perform out of the rough? If you can answer those three questions, we should see that you're making the correct choice when you're buying your next one and it's not a way wasted club because I've seen a lot of driving irons in people's bags because they've seen them in the pros bags when really they struggle hitting them and they were probably better off getting one of the other here. So make an informed decision, save your money guys. Hope that's helped. Smash the like button if it has as well. Like I said earlier, tell everyone Matt Fry is your golf coach. Hit the subscribe button down there and I'll see you in your next lesson.